Two of the leading preachers in this country are speaking out about why they have faith in the vaccine. In an Oz exclusive, my good friend Bishop T.D. Jakes is opening up about why his faith led him to get his COVID-19 shot. The bishop just received his second dose and took us behind the scenes of his shot. Hey, Dr. Oz, we're here at the Methodist Medical Center. We're gonna get our shots done, our second one. We've already done the first one, waited the several weeks, and we're coming back to get our second one done. And here we go. Thank you for your support. Gracias a Dios y el trabajo de muchos, hoy tenemos vacunas para protegernos del COVID-19. Ellas traen esperanza para acabar la pandemia, pero solo si están disponibles para todos y si colaboramos uno con otro. It's not about me and my rights. Now, obviously, there are some people who, for health reasons, can't be vaccinated. Different question. But it's not about me and my rights to choose. It's about how I love my neighbor. To love one another, as Jesus said, get vaccinated, get boosted. On Sunday mornings, you'll find Father Paul Abernathy preaching the gospel at St. Moses the Black Orthodox Church. But the rest of the week, he's walking the streets of Pittsburgh, sporting a fedora and preaching a different gospel, the gospel of vaccine acceptance. Sometimes when we pray, there's, there's, he gives us blessing by way of medicine, by way of uh, vaccines. See, when I receive the vaccine, it means I have one more day to praise God on this earth. Many Catholics might be wondering whether or not they should take this coronavirus vaccine. I would tell them absolutely. There is a conflict from time to time with science and, and scriptural teaching, but I don't think there's a, a conflict as it relates to vaccine. The Holy See, Rome, has issued uh, a statement and and declared that the vaccines are morally and ethically acceptable. So would you say for people who are wondering that the vaccines are, are part of God's plan? Well, insofar as uh, human knowledge is a part of God's plan, yes. Whenever we can uh, give good example to our people as public figures, as leaders in the community, we should do so. And then by the, the example of Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, I've had the vaccine. We're trying to tell our people, we want you to follow our good example. The hour is approaching. The beast is in the church. Jesus knew all about the hour that was approaching. He knew when his time was coming that he had to face the deepest darkness in order to come through into the light. One of the first examples of Jesus knowing his time was um, at the uh, wedding in Cana. It says here, Jesus saith unto her, to his mother, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Jesus knew the right time, didn't he? That things would happen and that he would bring about the salvation of the world. And for us, those of us that are discerning, can see that the hour is approaching. The hour of darkness is approaching. Concerning what um, is now happening in uh, our churches, now stating that that medical procedure, that one that begins with a V, is something that Jesus would have taken. And so we are beginning to see, aren't we, the true colors being revealed of the so-called men of God. The beast is in the church. John chapter 13, verse one. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Jesus knew that his hour had come, and he, he had to face something that none of us could face. And he had to face it for us, didn't he? The, the, the cross and everything that Satan could throw at him. John 13, 26 and 27, Jesus answered, when they were asked who is the one that is going to betray him, Jesus said, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And here's the key. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, 
that thou doest do quickly. There came a moment, there came a time when Judas was going to do that betraying. And I believe now we've come to a time when we're going to see men in the, in the churches making statements, rising up and saying this and that and the other. And those of us, of course, that are discerning will know that we're being deceived. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is Satan's hour. Satan's hour is approaching. Antichrist is about to be revealed at some point. No, we don't know exactly when. And many people have speculated and do speculate, but I believe that we must be vigilant more than ever before. There are three particular styles of management. They so speak to me of the way that we're being led, not just by politicians, but by church leaders. The one is laissez-faire, just simply means do as you can, do as you want, be free. A very lax form of management, one that almost allows you to do what you want to do. Another form of management, democratic. We've been used to the word democracy over these last couple of hundred years. We the people speak and vote and the consensus is, is developed. The majority, those of us who vote for a particular party, know that we pick a leader and we look to that leader as we have chosen him. And then there's the third form, the third style of management, the autocrat. We see the power of autocracy, the power of totalitarianism rising up. That one doesn't hear the voice of the people. That one doesn't give you the opportunity to choose for yourself what you want to do. That one mandates you. That's the one that tells you you will. In the churches, it's a lot more subtle. They come in a uniform. They come with pious words. They come with platitudes. But yet, their hearts are, are even more evil than those that are in the world. And we see them rising up in the church. These are the men that as it says here in Romans, see if you can recognize the kind of people we're talking about here. And as I read it, I want you to get a picture in your mind of what's happening now in the world. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Please note that. Hold the truth. These are men who are men of God. These are men who stand and preach to others and they speak of Jesus Christ. And they use his name. Now they put his name to a medical procedure. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. And he goes on. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. These are the men that have tasted Many of them are the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And yet they've turned their backs on the truth and they begin to preach heresy and blasphemy. It goes on, verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. When you profess something that comes from yourself, there is no godly discernment in it. They were foolish and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. We can add to that, can't we today? Worshipping the idol of science. The science is often referred to. Isn't it? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. We see it now, don't we? All the many genders now that are being spoken of, how it's acceptable for a man to identify in a certain way, in a certain sex, or a woman, vice versa. And this is what they've done. who have changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Worshipped and served the creature. Changed the truth of God into a lie. Verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, having left the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men with men working that which is unseemly, 
and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. It's acceptable, isn't it now? We can marry the same sex even inside a building like this and expecting God to put his sanction on it. And now it's open and it's brazen. And even as they did not like to retain God in their heart, in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, a reprobate mind. So eventually God gives them over. The time comes where there's, there's no going back. There's no repentance. God has said, that's it. And he could say he's washed his hands of them, shaken the dust of his feet and walked on. The last few verses here. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whispers. Note the word deceit amongst the leaders. Deceiving their congregations, speaking lies to them, soft soaping them, smooth words of honey, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, inventors of evil things. So referring back there to the science, I believe that we can have evil science and good science, disobedient to parents, of course the spirit of lawlessness at work, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Sin isn't always blatant. It's not always obvious. It's not always plain. And today, as I've said before, we live in a post-truth era, an era when the truth just doesn't matter anymore. It's a narrative that counts. And the narrative can just be the lie, and it will be believed. Leaders set the tone. We follow leaders, don't we? And when leaders start to go in certain directions, there'll always be people that will follow, regardless of whether it's right or wrong. We're going to need boldness more than ever before. It says here in Ezekiel 3, verses 8 and 9, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. The importance of hardening ourselves, not hardening our hearts, but hardening our resolve against the evil. Let's just be aware as we go through these days, as we watch, I wouldn't recommend watching the news, but being aware certainly of, of what's being said so that we can pray into things and understand what God wants for us in these times. I pray today that um, God will open your eyes even further and the eyes of your heart so that you can discern the times we're in because the beast is in the church and his spirit is rising. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.